Hello, welcome back to the Joy of Code. This is Michael again and today I will show you how to display some text in a Greenfield scenario. That is a question that has been asked quite frequently. That seems to be one of the things that people really want to know and don't, can't quite figure out themselves. It is not really very hard though, so I'll show you how to do this. Let's say we want... well I'll show you two things. One is to display some static text that doesn't change at all and then to change some text that you want to change during the uh, run of the scenario. Let's start with the static text. The trick is essentially just to realize that a bit of text is just another actor. So we create an actor um, for the text. Let's say I want to have um, instructions. So I call my class instructions and I don't give it an image at all. So here I've created now a subclass called instructions that has no image. Uh, when you, by, by the way, when you try to create an object of that and put that into the world, it will get the screen for default image. Um, but we won't use that because what we will do instead is we will dynamically create an image um, when the object is created. So instead of assigning an image statically to the class, we create an image at time of construction. Let's open the editor. And so if I actually fit that on screen here. Um, we don't actually need an act method for that. What we need is a constructor. And remember how you write a constructor. You write public no return type and then the name of the class. We don't need a parameter list. So here's our constructor. And what we do is we set an image here. So we use the actor set image method. And then we want to set an image here to an image that we create on the fly. So I say new, new Greenfoot image. Here I'm creating um, a new Greenfoot image and that parameter list is incomplete. I need to specify some parameters. So let's have a look at um, the parameters that we have available. So here I have the documentation for my Greenfoot image class. And we see we have um, four constructors available. One that creates a Greenfoot image as a copy of another image, one that creates an empty image that is fully transparent with a given width and height, one that creates an image from a file, and here this one is really quite useful if you want to create an image with some text on it because here I can give it a string and it creates an image with that string on it. I can specify the string I want on it, I can specify the font size and then foreground and background colors. So here, because I'm dealing with colors, and they are Java AWT color types, so first thing I do is I import that color class again, as we have seen before. I import Java AWT dot color so that I can use my colors which I need here. So let's say um, the text. So the first parameter of my image was the text. So I say, please click to create circles. That's the text I want to display. Next parameter was the font size. So I say I make that 18 points. And then two colors. Foreground color and background color. So here, um, let's say I say color.white is my foreground color and color.black is my background color. So here I'm creating a new image that has this text on it with that font size, those colors, and I set that as my own image. That is pretty much all I think I need to do. I compile this, and as soon as I create now an instruction, when I put that in here, there is um, my object. And now I see when I see the instructions and I can click. Um, so this is how you can create an actor that has text as its image. So that is how you create, how you show text on your screen. At the moment, I have interactively um, put this in, but I can also, so when I reset it now, it will be gone. But I can, of course, do that programmatically in the constructor of my world. I can just say here, add object, new instructions. And I add that at, say, 10 and 20. That is somewhere to close to the top left corner. So if I do that, um, close this 
and then I compile. Um, that is automatically here. Oh, no, that is, oh, I put it to 220, so I gave this location here. What I've forgotten is that actually um, the um, location I give is the center of the actor, so it's not the left thing, so it is the center here. So the easiest, if you want to find out where to put it, the easiest is just to put, place it by hand and check where it is. So if I wanted to appear here, let me just place it, can do this, and then I click on it and say inspect, and I check its x and y position. So at the moment it's at 113 and 380, so I use that. So I just say programmatically put it to 113 and 380. So if I now compile it, it will always put it there and I can run it. Okay, so that's the first half. Now let's make it a bit more interesting. If I want text that changes during um, the execution of the programs, for example, for a score counter that counts up, um, let us do that as well. So I create a new subclass, I call it counter, and the idea is the same. I don't give it an image, I create an image on the fly, but this time I don't want to give it a um, a static image. I want to um, change the text on the image during the program. So I say public counter, same as before, and the idea is the same. I um, give it um, an image that I create on the fly, but this time I say set image um, new Greenfoot image. And this time I use the constructor there where I just keep the, the width and the height. Let's say I make that 200 pixels wide um, and 30 pixels high. So I'm getting a rectangle that is fairly wide and just a little bit high, 30 pixels high, 200 pixels wide. Uh, so if we now were to create an object of this class, we don't see anything because this image, when I create an image by just specifying the size, it is completely transparent. But now um, I don't need um, the act method. Instead, I make myself a method called update. Oh no, let's. Miss, um, I, I call it. Uh, let's so call it add score. Okay, I make myself a a method where I can add to the score, um, and I make myself a method called update that updates the image. So update should show the current score. The current score I put in a variable here. I say private int score. Um, that is my score counter in a field, and I say here score starts off while being zero. Then I create my image and I say update. Update should show the current score on the image. So here what I do in my update is I get my image get image. That's my current image and we know at the moment it's just a blank image but I will also update every time I add a score. So I cannot assume that the image is empty because later it will be um, it will have the previous score on there because when I do an add score I will just say score plus plus which increments the score and I will also say update here. So this is every time I add the score it increments the score and updates the image. So the first time it should stay, it should show score as one, so next time it should sh show score as two. So here the image that I'm getting might already have the previous score written on it. So the first thing I need to do is I need to clear the image. Um, next thing I need to do is I need to set the foreground color because the default foreground color for a new freshly created image is black and because my background is also black I don't want to write with black on black and I can't see anything so I say image dot set color color dot white okay I say I want to use white color and then I say image dot 
draw and then I can I can draw a whole number of different things um, the one here draw string is interesting I can draw a string onto my image so this is what I want to do I draw a string and I draw the word score colon and there I use string concatenation and I append my actual score this one here refers to my field score I append the value of my field to that string so I show the word score and then the number behind it and then the question here now is where to draw this. Now these coordinates that are right here, that X and Y that is required here, are the coordinates on my image where I want to draw my string. And for that you have to know how strings are positioned. Let us have a quick look um, at how this works. So when I have um, a picture. So let's say this here is a picture, um, an image, a Greenfoot image that I want to draw on. Uh, we know that in Greenfoot the coordinate system is always so that the 0, 0 point, the origin, is at the top left. So here is the 0x coordinate, there is the 0y coordinate. And now assume I want to write this string onto that image. Now the one thing you need to know is if you give the location of a string, it is actually this point here that is um, the left and the baseline that you are specifying. So you have to specify the point on your image where this point of your string, the left edge of the baseline, the baseline is the bottom of your characters, um, but it's ignoring characters that actually go down below the baseline. So this, you have to specify the coordinate where the left baseline end of your string should go. So if I were to specify 0, 0 um, as the drawing position for my string, the string would be drawn here, which means it is mostly outside my image. I would just see a little bit of the G going into my image. Everything that's drawn outside of my image will be completely invisible, so I would essentially not see the string. What I want to do instead, I want to draw the string here, which means as an x-coordinate I have to give a bit of an offset and for the y-coordinate I have to give this offset. Um, the offset for the x-coordinate is just the margin I want here on the left, so that just has to be a few pixels. And then the offset for the y-coordinate has to be a margin plus the height of the string. So the height of the string, that depends on how big my font size is. Um, by default the font size is I think 14 pixels or so. Let's say I put this here at um, 4 pixels in, that's the x, that's the margin on the left, and then I put that at 20 pixels. So remember I've made my, my image 30 pixels high so that I can go 20 pixels down and have a bit of space left to the bottom to show the characters that go below the baseline. So I have here got my own image, wiped it, and with white color written on it, score is this. Every time the image gets updated. And it gets updated once at the very beginning, and then every time I increase the score. Let's try that out. Compile this. Oops, I have a compiler error here, and it says here return type required. That is true. I forgot the word void here. Let's just compile that again. I have another error. Okay, the color is not known because in this class I haven't imported the color class. Okay, let's try again. Compile. This time it does compile. Now we can try it out. Now let's compile the rest as well. Now if I put a counter in here, and I put it here, um, then it says score zero. And now every time here I invoke add score, counts up. So add score again and there it counts up. So every time add score it counts up. So every time I call add score what it does actually is it increments the score by one and updates the image that then draws my current score onto the image. Okay this is how you create text and such as a score counter in Greenfoot. Next time, in the next episode, I will show you how to integrate the score counter into 
a running project um, so that the score can actually be updated um, from other objects in the world. There are several different ways to do that and that is actually a very interesting case of uh, organizing object interaction. Um, so now you know how to write the score counter itself and next time I talk a little bit more about how to integrate it into a program. But this is all for today. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.